Hey everyone, what's going on? This is Max from Unsubscribed Healthcare. I wanted to go over basic formatting so you guys can start to make your own uh, sheets and your own templates uh, and make them in the way that you want. Personally, I like having headers on the top row, which you'll see a lot in my documentation. Um, I think it makes it a lot easier to read. And then we use the borders to identify like kind of the, the information that you want underneath patient ID and everything. Um, we'll get into formulas in another video, but this is really an introduction to kind of Google Sheets over Google Docs. The reason why I use Google Sheets over Google Docs is because you can have all these formulas to make it so that you bring information forward. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of have that data transfer from one sheet to the next, um, as well as the other biggest benefit I find from it too is that we can have our eval sheet and then go from our eval sheet to like a daily note and it's all in one file rather than having multiple files of uh, everyday treatment right so I can just click on the one patient file and I know that the eval sheet is going to be here the daily sheet can be here kind of going through all of that information in one sheet makes it really useful and really helpful so how do we do some of this stuff right if we come up here you can see that we have the patient name so if we were going to come and start our own column that we wanted to with patient name, I'd type in patient name. If we want to change that color, we can click on each cell that we want to uh, change the color of and click on the color that you desire, right? Or you can click on the row. If you click on the numbers on the left here, that's going to highlight the row. And then as we click on the color, it now changes it, okay? Afterwards, we come down here. If person's name is really long, right, you'll see that it will carry forward into the next cell. So there's no information in this cell so the, uh, you can see what continues forward. If we were to then type something in that cell, all that information disappears. If you don't want it to disappear, you can use what's called text wrapping. You click on text wrapping up here, and then the um, default is overflow. So if there's nothing here, it overflows and will cover that cell. You can click on wrap, and now the information wraps down to the next level, right? And it will keep adding rows and rows so the information is easy to read. If you just do clip, no matter what, even if the cell is blank, it's just going to clip it and it will be gone, okay? The other option that you have here is that if we don't want the information to be lost and we, want it, we don't want necessarily want it to wrap around like that, you can use what's called merge cell. That's what this is. Right now it's blank and you can't use it because we only have one cell highlighted. If we're going to highlight, again, we can either click and drag or we can click hold shift and use an arrow key over. And now you can see that this option is available. You can do merge horizontally, vertically, unmerge or merge all, right? So if we had highlighted this and we highlight the row below it, but we only want the uh, horizontals to merge. We click ho merge horizontally. Now both of these rows of cells only merge horizontally. If you have them both highlighted and then you click on this where it's uh, default is merge all, it creates all four of those cells into one cell. For our purposes, we only want to merge the horizontal row right here. So we can click on merge cell because we only have that row highlighted. Now you see that the information has carried forward onto this next cell. If you go on to date of birth and you didn't use this format and you wanted it to be smaller for the column so that it would fit more nicely, you can do that. So right, if we do 1, 1, uh, 85, right? We can make this column shorter or we can also make it so it's aligned underneath. You can see that it aligns to the right here, horizontal alignment. We can do in the middle, and it will stay in the middle of this. You can see that date of birth is also aligned to the left. If we do in the middle, now it kind of centers it. This carries forward when you also merge cells. So if we were going to merge these two cells, now you can see that stays in the middle, and that stays in the middle as well. Again, just makes it a little bit more easy to read. I like to keep the format the same throughout the uh, rows. So if the headers are to the left and the information is left, I want to keep it that way. This is all, again, personal preference. If you think this looks better, you can easily do that. It's your sheet. Do what you feel. So 
you can see here that I also have gate analysis running up. The way that we would do that is that we would highlight the cells that we want, come back to merge again because we have the column selected that we want to merge. We would do that, right? Uh, we could click on merge all. Or you do merge vertically if you had multiple columns uh, selected, right? And now you can see that it's merged all of the columns vertically. I only want this because I'm going to teach you how to write vertically as well. So we're going to merge all the cells. And then you can see text rotation. This allows you to kind of change the orientation of the uh, text. If we're going to go up, we would do posture. When you click on posture and enter it in, now it will be read up. Um, you know, kind of on tilted on the axis. You can also do it top down. You can do angles. You got to make sure that you're on the cell that you want. But you can see you can change it all around into the area that you want. If we don't want this in the top left corner, or the bottom left corner, we would change it again using horizontal alignment. And then the other option is the vertical alignment. So this next column, you're able to put in the middle, put on the bottom, right? And when you change the cell orientation with the writing, it changes where these align. If we go into the middle, you can see now that it puts it in the middle of the cell. And if we go to the right, it now moves it towards the right of the cell there. Okay, so again, I would probably put it like that. I just don't look <laughs> like how that looks, so I probably would never do this. Um, but that is an option for you guys. And again, if we only wanted to change this cell's color to make it easier to read and know that that's kind of the title of it all, then you could easily change it like that. If we wanted to change the column width again to make it so that the checkboxes fit evenly, you just need to right click on the column that you want, click on resize column, and then you can change it here. The smallest that it will go is two, I believe, pixels. But two pixels makes it really difficult to, uh, you know, click on or highlight or anything else. So the only way I reason why I do um, two pixels is if it's in like a row, because borders can get a little bit tricky. Let's go over borders. If we were going to make this into a border, we would highlight what we want to kind of outline click on the borders, which is this four squares here, and then I would just do outer border. That allows it to uh, select all of the outer border of the cells that we had selected. The only problem that you get here is that if we were to right click on the left and we were doing hide row, now you can see that it clips the information or clips the border underneath uh, column F row 18 and that's because when you do uh, the borders option and you click on outer borders it's saying the outer edge of the cells that you selected so now that this cell is gone in row 19 the outer border of this cell is also gone so that's why when you click on hide row that is gone these cells are merged in column E, so it still says that the outer border of the columns that have been merged, or the rows that have been merged, are still available. And that's why you see the border here. To fix something like this, what you can do is that when you're hiding these rows, if you go to the row underneath it in col uh, row 20, we can click on this cell, and if we do top border, now you can see that it's there. So even after we expand it, it's going to be there. And even if we hide all but one row, it will still keep that bottom uh, line there for the border. So that's how you can fix borders. That's how they're a little bit tricky. Uh, if you want to get rid of borders, you would just use the option in the borders to clear borders. But you can see you're able to do all borders. So that will do every single cell. Um, Inner borders, we'll just do in between all the cells. Horizontal borders, again, just doing the horizontal. Vertical, we'll just do vertical. Bottom border, we'll just do bottom. But again, when you're minimizing rows or anything else, you need to make sure that you 
have it so it's formatted so that you won't have those blank spaces. This gets a little bit tricky uh, and can be a, a long and tedious process, but that's how you would make it look nice. Um, I believe that's everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. If you guys have any questions or comments below, feel free to uh, comment. If you have examples of kind of things that you've done, I'd love to see them. Feel free to link that below as well. But otherwise, this has been Max from Unsubscribed Healthcare. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something today.